right into public expression. Uh, we have some cards filled out here. Uh, Ross Liberty. Okay, Mike Sweeney. Thank you. I would like to speak briefly in support of requiring the sheriff's zip ties for marijuana plants and charging a significant fee for them, a fee that covers far more than just administrative costs. You have broad authority under California law to enact regulatory fees to, quote, defray the actual or anticipated adverse effects of various business operations, according to the California Supreme Court in Sinclair Paint Company. The key question is, what are the costs to government created by medical marijuana growers? In particular, the costs connected to the county's liberal standard that allows up to 25 plants per parcel subject to nuisance restrictions. By allowing substantial medical marijuana production, the county incurs numerous costs, including protecting medical marijuana growers from theft and robbery, responding to neighbor complaints about marijuana impacts, investigation and response to marijuana growing which exceeds medical marijuana limits, public education and outreach about county marijuana rules. The Sinclair decision affirms your authority to target costs with the broadest possible linkage to medical marijuana growing. The sheriff's annual budget is $13 million. I would hope it would be possible to identify at least $1 million of marijuana-related costs out of that budget and use that as a basis to establish a fee for zip ties. I think the zip ties would sell quickly once their value is understood. A large segment of the marijuana industry wants protection against arrest and seizure. If you and the sheriff provide a safe haven where growers can have up to 25 plants, provided that strict nuisance rules are obeyed, and provided that each plant has a zip tie, Many growers will recognize that this is a good deal and a fair compromise. Currently, marijuana is a lose-lose proposition for Mendocino County. It's a loser for the county budget, a loser for the courts and marijuana defendants, and a loser for the general public. You can change it to a win-win proposition that will benefit the county budget, benefit medical marijuana growers, and provide relief to the public. We are fortunate to have a sheriff who is a creative thinker and who isn't afraid to try something new. I urge you to back him up 100% with the necessary amendments to the Marijuana Nuisance Ordinance that will establish a medical marijuana zip tie fee. And I have copies of the Sinclair decision. Thank you. Ross Liberty? I just wanted to uh, voice my support for Mike's proposal. Uh, I wanted to voice my support for fees over taxes, especially when they are uh, consistent with the cost of providing services. Um, obviously, the county and all the way to the feds are in for some tough economic times going forward here, and this would be a good way to, to raise fees or raise, raise funds. Um, other fees that I've heard of talked about was an eradication fee so when somebody gets uh, you know busted and they're pulling all their plants they can send them a bill for doing so I think that that has merit um, uh, tangential to all this too is there was talk of uh, a fee the sheriff suggested a fee for responding to false alarms and uh, I had several of those myself and frankly I don't think the taxpayer should pay for that I think I should pay for that so a fee based on false alarms for, uh, you know, for, uh, what do you call it, you know, alarm systems for your, your business or your, your house. Um, I would support that too. But anyways, the idea of supporting fees over taxes, I support that. Thanks. Thank you. Rosalind Peterson? Okay. John Sakowicz? Good morning, board, Chief Executive Officer, County Council. 
I want to make the uh, board aware that in the last week since I stood here and warned against the continuing uh, deteriorating deterioration of the stock market, uh, the market's fallen another 500 points. That's about 4.5%. Um, we continue to remain unhedged, which is what I've been warning about and will continue to warn about. Uh, this does not necessarily have to be the case. I have a friend who works for the city of San Francisco, and the city of San Francisco has been uh, invested in, uh, has allocated some of their resources to alternative inv investments. They are 106% overfunded. I speak not only to you, but also to citizens. I would, I would be, I think we're lucky if we're 70 or 75 percent funded in our retirement system. The point of the matter is that there is no incentive to manage our uh, assets wisely. Our, uh, our retirement board could mismanage uh, its assets down to zero and taxpayers would still be on the hook. Why? Because the pension obligations are constitutionally guaranteed. To that effect, I want to make you aware that I've uh, emailed you all an article I wrote for Alternative Weekly Press. I'm a contributing editor at the North Bay Bohemian, and I syndicate my articles to the 130 papers of the Alt Weekly Press. The article is called The Next Big Bubble, and it's about exactly this problem, uh, the, uh, the problem of unfunded public pension liabilities that were excessive to begin with because they were entered into uh, uh, collective bargaining agreements that were at times uh, the subject of undue influence, and in any event, they're unaffordable right now because of the collapse in the markets. You can uh, read my article at The Bohemian. You can uh, write to me at The Bohemian, or citizens can get a copy of the article just by writing to me directly at SACO4, S-A-K-O, numeric 4, at Comcast.net. SACO4 at Comcast.net. This is a looming problem. The Macaulay Initiative would, uh, if passed, if put on the ballot, and if passed, would give you the leeway to renegotiate some of these contracts, which I think is the only way you're going to get out from under them. Thank you. Thank you. John Graff. John Graff, representing the Employers Council of Mendocino County. Uh, I just wanted to report back to the board um, the problems that we're having in that uh, transportation committee that was put together to help try to find solutions for the wide load problem. Um, I've been in two meetings now. Um, there's a problem with the inconsistency um, of the opinion of the department head. There's a problem with the keeping the meetings flowing correctly. There's a problem with the minutes. The minutes from the first meeting do not reflect what happened in the first meeting. In the first meeting, we had a series of agreements. But the reason why I, I went ahead and, and decided to report this to you this morning was there is a, several members now feeling uh, like there may be some retaliation uh, with their permits from the department based on what's happened in those meetings. So. We kind of need help to either get this back on track correctly or find another way to resolve this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Graff. Supervisor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Graff, for your comments. Um, I sit on the General Government Committee along with Supervisor Brown, and uh, this was a referral um, from the General Government Committee to, to convene this group that you're discussing, and that happened in late 2008. I haven't had a chance uh, since receiving feedback from members of your group that are on this committee. I haven't had a chance to, to go over some of the issues with Supervisor Brown, but I have some ideas, and, and I think that Supervisor Brown and myself should meet with the Executive Office at the earliest opportunity and see what, you know, where we can go with the communications and, and trying to resolve some of these issues and, and hopefully simplify this and, and move uh, the decision-making process forward.